Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest on the severe thunderstorms we could be seeing in a few spots this evening and more widely through tomorrow as this heat wave does finally come to an end. We've seen some very high temperatures today. We have seen some areas seeing temperatures uh, highest temperatures in September for many, many decades, including Scotland um, and Wales, seeing temperatures getting up towards 30 degrees. I think just shy in Scotland and Wales towards 28, 29 degrees. But once again, a very, very hot day for many. However, down in the southwest, you can see we do have instability starting to come in. You see it's a broader area of rain at the moment and a few showers coming up from the English Channel. And this will uh, be the beginning of storms breaking out throughout this evening and through tomorrow. So do remember, if you enjoyed my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And do remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Earlier today, we did have a quite severe thunderstorm outbreak down in the far southwest for Cornwall. Um, we did see a uh, yellow warning put in force, and we did have a look at that yesterday. Uh, and that's now expired, but we did see this large area of rain now. That was originally thunderstorms, and they did break out quite severe towards late morning, uh, early afternoon. They have now moved further northwards and westwards um, and now a broader air rain across Ireland with still some heavy rain and maybe a few lightning strikes. You can see though where uh, we see the sort of the centre of the trough moving up you can see we have some quite intense thunderstorms breaking out across northern France and the Channel and those are going to be heading northwards tonight into tomorrow and more storms will be homegrown tomorrow afternoon. We have to keep an eye on some of these storms down in the Channel as these could start to head up towards central areas and there's a uh, so some hints within the, the models that this area of storms could sort of maintain its strength as it heads through central areas. So got to keep an eye out on this tomorrow, um, but definitely does look like this heat wave um, of seeing really nice sun sh sunny weather with very high temperatures is coming to an end with many areas tomorrow seeing more cloud and the threat of storms. In the Far East, it could still be reasonably warm. Um, but for many, it does look like it will be coming to an abrupt end, this heat wave. So if we do have a look at the yellow warnings for thunderstorms, you can see the warning today has expired. However, we do have widespread yellow warnings tomorrow covering all of Wales, all of Scotland, all of Northern Ireland, most of Northern England, the Midlands and a lot of the South West. Really areas not seeing the storms will be the South East and East Anglia. Um, they're not including the yellow warning, but there could still be the odd storm and there's likely to still be showers around. There, the thunderstorms earlier in the summer really have been um, sort of peppering the London area really so um, it's about time that the storms start, sort of transition northwards and westwards um, and it does look likely we're going to be seeing a quite widespread outbreak of storms so heavy showers and thunderstorms on Thursday have the potential to bring surface water flooding in a few places and disruption to travel from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow so there's sort of a standard warning covering most of the most of the day uh, if we do have a look at the further details, you can see following overnight rain and showers. So you see those showers moving up from the south and the southwest. That's going to be bringing some overnight rain for some and across Northern Ireland as well. More intense showers and thunderstorms are expected to break out fairly widely from late morning for easing during the evening. Whilst many areas will miss the most intense storms, torrential downpours are likely in a few places. Where these occur, there is the potential for 20 to 30 millimetres of rain in less than an hour and up to 40 millimetres in two hours. This will have the potential to generate surface water flooding, especially if it falls over urban areas. And once again, high impact, low likelihood, simply because it's going to be scattered storms. It doesn't look like it's going to be massive multi-celled system developing but it looks like there's going to be a lot of scattered storms they could form into bands at times um, so it does look like some areas will get peppered with storms other areas won't see uh, any at all so if you are excited for storms and looking out you've really just got to keep your fingers crossed um, as ever with a widespread yellow warning it's because there is a lot of uncertainty in the placement of the storms so if we do go over to Meteo Seal, um, we'll first have a look at the Cape Charts, which gives us sort of the energy within the atmosphere for storms. You can see currently, as I'm recording this around 6 o'clock, we do have a lot of energy over course Island, where we have the heavy rain at the moment, and that's why we do have some heavier pulses within it, potential for some storms breaking out there, and across western areas, and that's where we have seen thunderstorms earlier. There's also some, some across Scotland, but the instability hasn't quite arrived, so not likely to see anything too significant. You can see... Just below the sort of the gradient uh, or the sort of the scale of the Cape, you can see there is quite a significant Cape across northern France. That's going to be fueling these storms that are potentially going to head across southern areas. Will most likely 
overnight to night um, sort of become just generally showers and areas of rain and that's where we could see some rain for the east and the southeast overnight tonight for clearing. You can see around 11, 12 p.m. tomorrow, uh, 11 a.m., 12 p.m. tomorrow, we do see Cape significantly build across the Midlands, across northern England through Republic of Ireland, down the southwest and in parts of southern Scotland as well. And this is where we could see some quite severe thunderstorm outbreaks. Moving up, heading northeastwards, um, and we have to keep an eye on those areas. That's where we could be seeing the most severe storms. But anyway, outside of that cape, there is still the potential, of course, for storms, as ever with this instability. It's just less likely. As we move through to Friday, you can see less instability around, still in the Far East. Um, potentially East Anglia and parts of the Northeast could see some storms through Friday afternoon, but it does look like it's going to be more just generally scattered and um, potentially heavy showers and less likely to be storms as we move through. So if we do have a look at the precipitation, you can see at the moment we do have that heavier rain across Ireland, um, potentially a few storms forming in there. We do have a bit of a band forming on the Meteor Seal run by this evening. Potentially as those showers sort of move northwards, um, we could see it's potential for that rain to move northwards, potentially becoming more heavier throughout the morning, forecasted by the WRF. And we'll have to see what happens with that. At this stage, I'll doubt that, looking at how they're forming in the channel. But you never know, really. Um, there could be some um, sort of... There could be some... Um, rapid development of these storms potentially overnight um, we'll just have to see really what happens when we wake up in the morning you can see though there's a bit of a quiet time later in the morning as these showers sort of fade away before big storms pick up throughout the afternoon in northern england the midlands down into the far southwest across ireland northern ireland and into scotland as well and as we move through they do sort of dissipate away still could be some showers in the southeast across central southern areas as well um, less likely to be thunderstorms though and we'll just have to see uh, what happens on the radar there and as we head through friday you can see there is a few storms breaking out in the far east and the northeast but again another day of just scattered showers uh, and potential for storms especially in the east and by saturday it does look like more showers and maybe some more persistent rain building in across scotland so if we do go through the R pair to see how that uh, what that does look like, you can see a broader area of rain tonight moving north eastwards, bringing the potential for showers and maybe some storms in the morning for central areas before big outbreak of showers and storms throughout the afternoon. Not too intense in the R pair, but that's something we tend to see where it doesn't particularly model showers that well. But across central areas, northern areas, potentially into the southwest, that's where we're favoured to see these uh, scattered thunderstorms. And as we head through, it does look like things will fade away, but still a lot of showers around as we are still in unstable air. And more showers and storms will break out once again in the northeast, potentially into East Anglia and the southeast. It'll be interesting to see if the Met Office do put in a weather warning for Friday afternoon. Looking by the current models, there is probably... Um, a reason to put one in um, as there's very similar sort of cape and precipitation um, hints coming from the models so we we'll have to keep an eye on what the Met Office do do with that of course they have more high resolution models and more parameters so they can make better judgments than we do have on the freely available models beyond that you can see through Saturday more scattered showers around um, and just generally unsettled um, in areas of course there will be some regions that do see some nice pleasant sunshine at times but it doesn't like that is going to be particularly widespread like we've had at the moment if we do have a look at the temperatures you can see this afternoon we saw temperatures reaching around 28 29 if not 30 degrees in a few spots we'll have to see what the official um temperatures come out later as we head through to tomorrow afternoon you can see, can see it's still quite warm in the east 24 degrees potentially but for the west much cooler around 18 19 20 degrees may uh, and probably cooler where we do see the showers and storms as we head through to Friday, you can see temperatures, again, 21, 22 degrees in the Far East, potentially, as we still have some warmer air there, but widely high teens, maybe 20 degrees, which to be honest, isn't too bad for September. It's just a little bit disappointing compared to what we've had earlier this week, where many areas may be like 8, 9, 10 degrees cooler than we have at the moment. And then by Saturday, widely around 20, 21, 22 degrees, as it does look like Saturday may be a bit of a drier day, um, so... We'll have to see really what happens um, with that. So if we do go through the icon run, have a look at the precipitation first. You can see the showers moving up to the north at the moment. Fizzling out a little bit overnight before taking off once again through the Midlands and Northern England tomorrow afternoon into the evening. And then slowly fizzling away 
before Friday afternoon taking off once again in the east, northeast. Um, severe storms could be seen there, and then eventually just more unsettled. Um, Saturday looking like a decent day in the south, potentially um, escaping a lot of showers further north, more showers and persistent rain. And by the end of the week, potentially for some more showers and rain moving in. If we do have a look at the max temperatures, you can see this afternoon we saw temperatures, again, around high 20s, feeling really quite pleasant in um, many areas. By Thursday afternoon, widely 20, 21, 22 degrees, maybe the odd 24, 25 degrees in the east where we do dodge the showers and the storms. But by Friday afternoon, most areas are going to be pretty uh, cooler, around 21, 22 degrees for the high. When we do see sunshine, that can still feel really quite nice, but just not quite as warm and pleasant as we've had this week or early this week. Um, and of course, by Friday, there's still the chance of showers at times. And then by Saturday, again, widely 22, 23, 24 degrees. So still a good few days out there where we do dodge the showers and storms. But if you are planning to go out, um, it may be nice sunny, but you do need to keep an eye on the radar and the weather warnings. As it does look like, many areas will see storms and scattered showers at times over the next two or three days. So if we do, lastly for the short range models, have a look at the UK Met Office run sheet, what that is forecasting. You can see that area of rain that moved through the southwest, those storms that move through, and are just generally broader area of rain across Ireland at the moment. You can see it's not particularly well modelled, it's a lot more widespread than that. So you can see with the showery and convective nature of these storms and these showers, it is difficult um, for the models to exactly um, say how large they're going to get and how widespread. It's just really the risk at this stage. Um, we just have to keep an eye on the radar for sort of the live um, storm, um, so live storms taking off and showers as well. So if we do run through this evening, you can see the potential for that area of showers and storms moving up from the north. Now, it, from the south, sorry, northwards. Now, it's a bit further eastwards than we're currently seeing on the radar. Um, and we'll just have to keep an eye on how that does move into a broader area of rain and potentially storms overnight tonight. And then we have more widespread storms breaking out with a widespread yellow warning. You can see why widespread storms across the Midlands, the southwest, Ireland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, into parts of Scotland as well. Um, could be some quite significant effects from that, as of course. Things do start to dry out by Friday, uh, Thursday evening into Friday morning, but we do see more showers and storms potentially break out by Friday afternoon, especially in the east. And then just generally a sh quite showery outlook it could be still, of course, as I said, some nice sunshine and drier uh, times out there, but always the risk of showers for many areas. If we do have a look at the max temperatures, you can see, of course, reached high 20s, maybe if not 30 degrees in a few spots this afternoon. By Thursday, we'll, we can see temperatures climbing to maybe 23, 24 degrees in the far east, but again, a little bit cooler for many areas as we do with showers and storms around. By Friday, widely cooler 21, 22, maybe 23, the highest temperature. But again, widely high teens, maybe 20, 21 degrees. Feeling still pleasant, but cooler than what we've had this week. If we do finish up by going and have a look at Saturday, you can see widely 21, 22, 23 degrees in England and Wales, even parts of Ireland seeing maybe 19, 20 degrees. But for Scotland, where we do have some cooler air coming in off the Atlantic, you can see it is a lot cooler, a good 10 degrees cooler than what we've had earlier this week. If not, maybe 15 degrees cooler in a few spots where we did see high 20s. So you can see autumn maybe uh, sort of kicking in across Scotland. But for the time being, it still does look like we might be having some decent um, summery, um, summery uh, sort of days in the south where we see temperatures getting up into the low 20s. But we just do have that shower risk around at times. If we do finally have a look at the GFS ensembles, just have a brief look at the longer term outlook. You can see at the moment we've got really quite warm up air temperatures and those are going to be dropping over the coming days. You can see the precipitation signals evidently as we do have showers and storms around. We're going to get to a point where we get to around average, if not below average, by sort of this weekend into early next week. There's still a lot of scatter within the ensembles, but it does definitely look like it's going to be turning much cooler. And then beyond that, still a lot of uncertainty, but it does look like generally it's going to be around average. Nothing too cold, nothing too warm at this stage. Still a few warmer ensemble members out there, but we still got quite an unsettled outlook with Quite a few precipitation spikes, not a massive deluge, so no massive stormy weather coming, but it does look like we will have showers um, around quite frequently. 
if we do have a look at the mean sea level pressure, you can see lower pressure is arriving at the moment. You can see sort of dipping by sort of Thursday, Friday, when we have the highest shower activity, then rising again to higher pressure, around 1,020 millibars, and it sort of stays around that for the foreseeable future, which is decently high pressure, so there's going to be a lot of dry and relatively pleasant weather, as you saw by um, those short-range models at times, but it's not a massive big area of high pressure like we've had um, over the last few weeks, um, so it does look like there will still be showers around. Um, but of course, there will be some pleasant sunshine. I know people didn't enjoy the high pressure we had over the last few weeks and towards the end of August, as even though it was dry for many areas, we did have a lot of cloud um, and a little bit of drizzle here or there, um, not seeing a lot of sunshine. So it does look like there will be still be plenty of sunshine, even though it does look like it's going to be a little bit more unsettled over the coming sort of four or five days. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.